Hi, Adam here. It's a bit cold and blustery today and with the rain uh, filling up my glasses, I thought it'd be better to sit down, grab a tea and have a little talk about uh, salary budget planning and the factors that uh, you use to get involved uh, when trying to decide that. So if you're doing a salary review, the majority of reviews are effective the 1st of January or the 1st of April. Uh, if it's 1st of January, you're already slap bang in the middle of uh, everything you're doing on it. And uh, yes, you know, all of this is old news. If it's 1st of April, then more than likely uh, the budgets are already being discussed and in some cases will have been set. But when it comes to looking at it and trying to input into that process, there are a standard uh, number of factors that you would take a look at. First and foremost, uh, inflation. Absolutely, how much are prices rising in the market? There are two uh, main measures which are looked at there, the consumer price index, CPI, and the retail price index, RPI. CPI became the government's main measure of inflation well over a decade ago, and uh, as such is sort of the primary inflation measure. However, retail price index is very much um, involved and in the minds of uh, unions in particular. So people will look to that one as well as CPI. So it is very worth taking a look at both. At the moment, uh, you can see on the Office of National Statistics website that inflation uh, CPI is around one and a half and RPI is 2.1. If you go to the Bank of England's website though, uh, you can see not just what it is, but where they see it going. Because remember, if you're making page budget decisions, you're making them now for a pay increase that's going to be effective in four, maybe even six months time, depending on when you have your budgeting conversations. So you need to be thinking about the likelihood of it changing so that you can deliver a consistent message. Uh, nothing would be worse than setting, uh, say, a 2% budget and then seeing a massive spike in inflation that drove prices to two and a half. Suddenly, it looks like you're giving very weak increases, even though you may have set it in good faith when it was, say, one and a half percent uh, when you made your decision. So the Bank of England, lovely little fan forecast, sort of it says now and then how do we think we're going into the future? And it's a good way to sort of see the overall trend and see if things are expected to go up or down. Now, at the moment, they expect things to go uh, down a bit and then back up through 2020. Although it is worth noting that they were assuming a smooth Brexit transition had occurred at this point. Obviously, uh, we know it hasn't. So there will be uh, elements of uncertainty and it will be very interesting to see the next Bank of England report because uh, the one I'm reference referencing is dated August 19. So you've got your inflation. How much is just the cost of living generally going up? Uh, another very useful tool is to get involved in salary budgeting surveys. Uh, so you can go to nearly any uh, major consultancy supplier. Uh, in the past, I've been involved in Willis Towers Watson, for example. Generally speaking, they're free as long as you participate. So you put your intentions in about budgeting and you get back other information. Equally, you have places like Expert HR um, who, and Income Data Research who will look at settlements. So these are publicly announced settlements from unionised organisations saying how much have we negotiated as a general pay increase for our workers. Slightly different data sets. Salary budgeting surveys is generally talking about the whole amount. So how much are we expecting to use for general increases and those larger increases for people that need large scale pay adjustments because sort of half promotions, you know, you've taken a lot of responsibility and now we want to increase your pay to reflect it or making corrections. Whereas with settlements, what you're looking at is, as I say, a negotiated general increase for everybody. So if you see two and a half percent on a settlement, Pretty much everyone's getting two and a half. If you see two and a half in a salary budgeting survey, probably the general increase is more around two, but that will be spread out amongst different people. Now, one thing that's a bit tragic is certainly since 2008, there's a lot of rigidity that has come into pay expectations. I can tell you now that if you look at a salary budgeting survey, the median is almost certainly going to be 3%, maybe 25 probably 3 
if you look at a salary budgeting, uh, sorry, a settlements um, data source, it's going to be two or two and a half. These have been pretty consistent now for a long time. It's not that we shouldn't still be checking them, but actually companies seem to have adopted a relatively standard approach year on year in terms of their overall uh, budgeting. Another interesting factor is unemployment rate. So uh, you may not be aware, unemployment at the moment is at 3.8%. What does that mean? Well, for context, you have to go back into sort of the late 70s, early 80s to see unemployment rates that low. In the 10 years leading up to the 2008 financial crisis, unemployment tended to be around 5 to 6%. So that was a pretty economically prosperous period. Ooh, economically prosperous period, that's a good one, um, for the country. And five to six was kind of a normal rate that was driving that. So 3.8 has been pretty low. Why is that important? Well, the theory is reward, pay, it's about attraction and retention. If there are lots of people unemployed, then you've got a wide pool of people all looking for jobs. So it's easier to find people and organisations don't have to compete as much on the various different factors, which includes pay. If there are fewer people, they do have to compete. And so as a result, it can be a factor in pushing up wages because you have organisations competing for a limited pool of available people. However, an interesting counterpoint that put it in my mind is Manpower Employment Group did their recruitment expectations survey and they published the results. I saw it in People Management. I saw it in uh, some national pet media. And what they reported is that hiring intentions were at their lowest since 2012. Very broadly, they ask organisations, do you expect your employment, your payroll to stay the same, to go up or to go down? The majority actually say they expect it to stay the same, but they take the number expecting it to fall, minus, and the number expecting it to increase, plus, and they put them together to get their hiring intention figure. And at the moment, it's plus 2%. So only 2% of organisations on net are expecting to increase their headcount. Now, that sounds bad in the sense that if recruitment demand is low, then that unemployment figure isn't actually as strong a factor in pushing up wages. So you could use it to discount that. However, if you look at the report and dig into the results, it has lots of breakouts by sector, by region. West Midlands, very robust hiring. East Midlands, not so much. But most fascinating was looking at the size of organisations. So micro organizations and small organizations uh, that's less than 10 and 10 to 50 employees have the lowest hiring intentions so they are around plus one plus three percent so they are expecting to stay broadly the same however when you look at median and when you have a look at large 50 to 200 and to 200 plus they have much more robust hiring expectations plus 12 and plus 14 percent in fairness, the median figure uh, is 3% lower. So there has been a downfall there, but the large figure is broadly the same. And with respect to those micro-organisations, they employed many, many people across the UK. But actually those large employers, they have a lot of jobs. If they are intending to increase their headcount, they're not likely to be increasing it by just one or two. They're going to be thinking, yes, we're going to be taking on five, 10, 30, 50. So actually, even though net across the 2000 organisations that participated, hiring intentions were low, actually the larger organisations, the medium organisations, those sort of big employers with larger headcounts do have a more robust attitude. So actually we can stay a little cool and we can look at the unemployment measure as one that is likely to apply that upwards pressure. Now, those are the big ones. If you're putting together a report, you should be looking to uh, include those and reflect them. Uh, of course, there are always other factors. Um, your sector, uh, you may have financial pressure in your sector, particular skills roles that are in high demand that will be driving it up. 
uh, equally location. Um, for example, if you're operating a contact centre and one closes in your local area, there will be a flood of people coming into your local market looking for work. Take some of the pressure off. Equally, contact centres tend to be clustered. If a new one opens, they're going to be sweeping up people and they're going to be competing for your own people. So that will be an upwards pressure that wouldn't be applicable on a national basis, but be very much specific to you and your locale. So, there are the big ones. I hope you enjoyed uh, a little chat. Uh, I know I did. Thank you very much for joining me and have a great day.